والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم Glory be to Allah who sent Ramadan as a mercy to mankind. It's a purification of our soul, our heart and our mind. Be here with patience for the sake of our Rahman. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Dear Huda TV viewers, welcome to Ramadan Change Me This is episode 4 out of 10 We'll be with you here on Huda TV until the 17th of the holy month This is the program where you try and we try together to be the best or close to the best that we can be via positive change and self-development It is the program where you can also win grand prizes by uh, subscribing to uh, the website e.holul.net e.holol.net to do for yourself the self-evaluation practices and tests, the pre-test and uh, continuous tests as we go throughout the program until you do the final test at the, after the end of the holy month of Ramadan and it's there only where you can win our major prizes major prize is 20,000 Saudi Riyals that's the first prize we have uh, total prizes of 80,000 Saudi Riyals for 40 winners as we said the first prize is 20,000 the second 15,000 Saudi Riyals the third 10,000 Saudi Riyals as for prizes from the 4th to the 10th, they are worth 5,000 riyals. And from the 11th to the 30th, they are worth 1,000 riyals. And from the 31st to the 40th, they're worth 500 riyals. But you can also win with us daily laptops uh, on our program by answering our daily Islamic trivia question uh, by SMSing us at 002-014. 327-1771. We'll be te telling you very shortly who won uh, yesterday's uh, laptop. Don't forget, you can also join us live via phone on 002 02 248 or 249. And you could also email us at ramadanchangedme at hoda.tv. Now, a reminder of yesterday's question and the winner for that, of course, today's question will come your way just before we wrap up our 30-minute program. Yesterday's question was, what was the number of Muslim soldiers during the Battle of Mu'tah? And the correct answer was, answer number two, 3,000 soldiers. We remind you that uh, for you to give us the answer, uh, you SMS us at 002-014-327-1771, you write your name, your country, and the number of the correct answer, whether it's one, two, or three. And yesterday's winner was Brother Muhammad Abdul Qadir from the United Arab Emirates. Again, Brother Muhammad Abdul Qadir from the UAE. Congratulations, Brother Muhammad. Now, time to open up our discussion with our psychotherapy specialist and life coach uh, specialist and self development trainer, Sheikh Ramiz Ibrahim. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Ramiz. And of course, with our distinguished panel that we have here uh, with us in our studios, who share with us the same goal, trying to be the best that you can be via positive change and self-development. Brothers Abdullah Ali Yami, uh, Amr uh, Abdul Al, Aishar Saeed, and Sharif Hamdi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear brothers. And uh, the title, of course, for tonight's episode is self-development and the methods and mechanics of self-evaluation. Shaykh Ramis. Alhamdulillah. Uh, we mentioned in the last episode that uh, a clear function exercise, which was to practically write down uh, things that we liked and we didn't like and things we should change about ourselves. And self-development will always bring some kind of anxiety uh, as regards to trying to find out about yourself. As deeper you go, uh, the fear sets in, as Brother Asher mentioned, 
and bringing up something which is deeply hidden in the depths of one's soul, which they want to keep hidden. Um, <clears throat> Self-development is a process which only begins uh, when a person becomes sincere in their path. We mention sincerity and intention as something, I mean, it's, it's a must, it's a condition. Okay, it's a condition. And um, most people, they seem to be uh, intending to change. That's why, they, they, that's why some of them may go to counsellors, life coaches and physio um, physiotherapists, psychotherapists, and that's their intention. They want to change. Now, if a person is saying, I wish, I wish to change, and they have the intention, obviously that's why they, they verbalise it. They intend it with their heart, they verbalise the intention, Yet, when you give them the actual opportunity, when you give them the medicine, when you give them the opportunity for it, they make excuses. Because the excuses benefit them. And we mentioned also yesterday, that uh, we, uh, the last episode, that laziness isn't a function of a human being that is a general, gen generality of that being. It's just that they haven't made themselves goals. We mentioned smart goals, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and t timely with time. And that, so they have no motivation for it. Now, the intention that we, uh, we're talking about is about showing sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, by making a pact with oneself that you wish to make a disciplined and, commit and committed action with the intention. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, 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 in Surah An-Kabut, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَحْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ So, but as for those who strive hard, now they want to strive hard, Okay, in, in, in our cause, we shall most guidely guide them to the right path. And Allah loves those of people of Ihsan. Mm. Now we know Ihsan, as in the hadith of Jibail, that it's as if you are seeing Allah in front of you, and if you can't know that He sees you. He's doing an every act of action with the positive good, the best that you can do. As in the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he mentioned that do things with sincerity and with Ihsan, even to sharpen the knife in such a way that you slaughter the sheep with ihsan, in the best part, without any harm, any anxiety. That's gave me something metaphoric now, because we sometimes, we slaughter ourselves in that way. Without even trying to do the ihsan, we slaughter ourselves in the way by abandoning ourselves. Sometime, some way along the line, we abandon ourselves. And, it's, and it takes a trainer, a coach, to actually see that. Always the, the coach can't go around and saying, yes, you have this problem, you have that problem. But when you do go and see a coach or a, a psychotherapist or a counsellor or someone that you need help from, they have to be intuitive enough. Okay? They, have to be, uh, they, they need to have specialised acuity to know and sense what it is. Sometimes I, I just walk around uh, 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 at home or I, I, when I go places and I, I go up to a brother and I say, brother, I sense this from you. And most of the time, alhamdulillah, I'm right and sometimes I'm wrong. But when I'm right, it makes me feel good that I'm doing my job properly. It's just the way my test is, but my sincerity is, is to help that brother in some, in some kind of way. So, the mechanics and the methods that we can use is that we mentioned in the last episode about writing something down uh, that you like about yourself, things you don't like about yourself, and things that you wish to change about yourself. And again, I must re reiterate this, it's important. Things you wish to change about yourselves may not coincide with things you dislike about yourself. Because some of the things you dislike about yourselves, you, your nafs, is not ready to change yet. Mm. This is something else. You've got to take that ap away from that and, s and deal with that in, in specifically in, in another time. The quicker the better, obviously. Writing things down is different than just um, thinking about it. Some people learn audio-visually. Okay? Most of us are audio-visual because of the, the times that we're living in. TV, radio stations you hear and you see. Me personally, I tend to learn far quicker by listening. Sometimes I like watching, but I listen. If I listen, close my eyes and listen, I can absorb a lot of things. That's why I hate music. Sometimes when I go places and there's music, I walk out. And brother says, why is it bother you? I say, it bothers me. Because it enters my soul and, and two hours later I find myself humming the tune. I think, where's that come from? Because I absorb it, so I've got to be careful. Sufyan authority, alhamdulillah, He's, he learned that way. He learned by audio. audio. When he would pass my music, he used to, he used to fit, uh, close his ears and walk away. Now, as regards to uh, other ways of, uh, of changing uh, your behavior, is knowledge. Knowledge. 
طلب علم فريضة على كل مسلم ومسلمة that seeking knowledge is فرض now فرض just like what صلاة so why we're not seeking in that manner it's better like uh, brother uh, Abdullah mentioned yesterday um, last episode that it's better to learn a little bit and practice it than know a whole bunch and it's wishy-washy you just practice it here and there and that that makes sense it makes absolute sense to learn a little bit and practice it that way you will not feel the hypocrisy which will bring you down and make you make make you sorrowful the uh, uh, knowledge is important because once you learn the knowledge you will know what you didn't know and what you need to know without knowledge you will not know that you don't know right. if that's not confusing I'll confuse a bit more <laughs> it's, not. it's not so it's like it's it's only after you know what you thought you knew which humbles you does that make sense it's yeah. only what you know yeah. after you what you thought you, kn you knew which humbles you and this is arrogance. This is removing the arrogance. Knowledge should remove arrogance. We all know that Allah is Alim. He's the only one that has the full and pure source of knowledge, and He gives it to whom He wills. The and it's not worth finding knowledge about something that's not going to benefit you. You need to be specific. You set yourself a smart goal, a goal which is specific. I'm not generally saying um, I want to be healthy. That's general. You should say, I'm going to uh, plan to go to the gym at least two hours a week. Okay? That's a specific goal. Uh, you have to measure it. Measuring by how? Uh, the goal is right. I need to lose 10 pounds. I have to keep at it. How I want to lose a pound a week. It's measurable. Okay? It's one kilo, two kilos a week. It's measurable. How many times can I go? What times do I need to go? It's measurable. And you've got to keep to the routine. Attainable. It has, again, we're talking realistic. about being realistic, okay? It has to be attainable, okay? It's achievable. Yes, this goal is, is achievable. And realistic, okay? It has to be realistic. Realistic enough that your heart will not, uh, you won't lose hope in it. You won't lose heart in it. And obviously, timely. You're going to set yourself a time from now until when you wish to achieve that goal. How many times have we uh, tried to set ourselves a goal and what happened is before we actually achieve it, what do we do? We give up. We give up. We sabotage it. Not give up. Not just give up. We sabotage it. Mm. Move on to we goal. actually sabotage it. The actual goal that we need or that we want before we actually get to the point where we're going to be successful, we actually sabotage it. Not give up. We sabotage it on purpose. Although you could be very close and maybe you, you, you've done three quarters of the, yeah. uh, yes. of the path. And the closer you are to it, then you sabotage it, the more you're going to feel sorrowful for it. The more you're going to forget, you feel, feel like, I'm a failure. So any How can I be so close? That? What's the explanation for it, that? The same say? thing we mentioned before in the other episodes. You don't believe you are valuable enough to deserve such success. Now, some people, uh, Brother Ash, will talk about fear. Fear is something that we need to talk about uh, for, uh, you know, for a long time. It's important because it's the fear that makes you give up. Fear of failure. Not just fear of failure, the fear of success. Because the fear of success, of getting that success, means more responsibility, more accountability, more reasons that's not valuable enough for you to, to attain. With that beautiful thought, uh, Sheikh uh, Ramiz and uh, dear viewers, allow us to take uh, our break here. Uh, on Ramadan Change Me, we'll be taking a very short break and we'll be back with the second parts of the show. An open discussion will be available. Stay tuned. Here with patience for the sake of our Rahman, a continuous training to strengthen our Iman. One of the highest grades of patience is fasting. Allah said in the divine hadith, إِلَّا الصَّوْمِ فَإِنَّهُ لِي وَأَنَا أَجْزِي بِهِ Only fasting is sincerely dedicated for me, and I'm the one who will reward for that.
Ask God is a program which aims to answer your questions about your deen, your faith, your way of life. This, of course, is Islam. This is a totally different price, but I divided the payment over this period of time. And the seller is the person or the firm which owns the, the item which you're buying in this condition. This form of business transaction is love. Welcome back, dear Huda TV viewers, talking about self-development and the methods and mechanics of self-development uh, with our uh, psychotherapy specialist and life coach, Sheikh Ramaz Ibrahim, who uh, started with us by uh, introducing yourself to yourself and by making the intention and self-evaluation. Now we're talking about self-development itself, and uh, you talk, Sheikh, about knowledge and, and training uh, during the first part of, uh, of the show. The training is up to the person who really wants to change. And this, this, is the, this is part of the seeking, seeking the knowledge. Now, I'm sure uh, the brothers here, they have been in situations where they've set themselves a goal, and you've... I mentioned the word sabotage. I'm like, that's new for you, or the feeling is new for it. Giving up is part of sabotaging it. Now, uh, Abdullah, has there been a situation where you've actually... Uh, and, and the viewers, you know, I'd like you to actually uh, think about this and see if uh, uh, you've had many times, I'm sure you had, that you've had the goal that you've set yourself and you've actually sabotaged it. I've had thousands. I mean, this, I've had thousands. I don't mind saying it. But also I've had thousands of goals that I've actually succeeded. Yeah, I've had uh, actually like many, many actually. But one of them I do remember is trying to memorize the Quran since the last seven years. Every time I say this year, I'll do the whole Quran this year. and. It's been like this. It's been one of my what's goals. Seems to be the what's actually what's dis what's distracting you? Uh, I always find myself having something else to do, and I think uh, you know obviously we have to work, and uh, I think that you know my environment does not help me. Maybe I make excuses. I did start off with a regular program, but then. From my nature, I have to go and help somebody so today. Enough, I have yeah. to go and do this today. You can't say no. Yeah, the, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you I can't, can't say no. Yeah. This is this is all of us like this mo yeah. most of the time. And once the pattern is falling out, what do you think? Yeah. yeah, there are many also goals that I, I plan to achieve and I gave up. Uh, but one of them, of them, uh, I once uh, planned to uh, analyze and uh, read a novel in my uh, uh, study uh, in a week. Actually, I, I began to, no, I'll start tomorrow. I'll start after tomorrow. And the week went off, I, I didn't know. This procrastination, basically. Yeah. In that sense. You can say not be able to say no and procrastination. Asha? I think for me, uh, I have a goal every year. Uh, the same, I had the same goal this year, was that where, as Ramadan approaches, I always think, say to myself, I'm going to pray every taraweeh in the mosque and I'm going to pray every salah in the mosque and I'm going to finish so much of the Qur'an and recite so much of the Qur'an uh, yet when Ramadan starts uh, uh, shaitan comes and you start to make excuses for yourself you say that's uh, a good point that's what I'm looking for excuses this, this yes. is uh, uh, you know this is the first fast you can always go to, to, to tomorrow to the taraweeh and uh, you know you're tired from the first day of fasting uh, and you, you seem to make your life more busy in Ramadan. I mean, the month before Ramadan, yeah. you have all the time in the world. Worse still is when the shaitan says to you, don't worry, you've got next Ramadan. 
Mm. Or you've got tomorrow, yeah. you've got the but next by day. By the way, Sheikh, if, if you'd allow me, is shaitan more active during Ramadan or less active during well, Ramadan? Well, we know the shaitan's not locked up. The shayateen are locked up. Those ones who are very strong and uh, give you more, uh, more control, more waswasa. Mm. You know, that's why you're more calmer in Ramadan. But the shaitan mm. himself is running through our veins. He's always with us. But the, the effect on us is less. Mm. Sharif? As for me, uh, uh, for three years, I have had a goal which is to get married. The Prophet, peace, uh, peace be upon him, ordered the youth to get married if they have the ability to do that. Right? So I decided to do, to do that. But um, uh, the family of the girl that I, uh, I engaged, uh, actually they claimed that I have bad, uh, bad points that I should abandon. Okay? They said that yeah, they judged me, but uh, that time I believed that uh, they were true, like what, like the, I do the, not... The, the point is they made, they pointed out, were true. Yeah. So you were, you were honest enough to acknowledge it. Yeah, I, I honestly, I was, they claimed that uh, I do you not... You don't have to mention them. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's but very brave. Yeah, yeah that's, that's okay. right, that's, that's okay. genuine, it's authentic. But uh, later, after I separated from, from the girl, okay, uh, my brothers in Islam they corrected the view for me. They said that you are okay. Don't, do not abandon your values. You are okay. But, you know... Maybe they had lower values and you had a higher value and they wanted their, you to be on, yeah. their, on their level. In their view, in their view, in their they view. saw that I and was not a, a, good, a, good, a good man, okay? But, alhamdulillah, uh, the, my, my brothers uh, showed me the straight path and they said, okay, you are on the track. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Coach so allows to get in this phone call, yeah, sure. uh, yeah. Ali from Egypt, and uh, we'll see if uh, Brother Ali will be asking a question or whether Sheikh Ramiz will be asking him um, uh, a question about, uh, we're talking here self-development. Brother Ali, Salaamu Alaikum. Alaikum Salaamu Alaikum. You're on air. First of all, I'd like to thank you for this wonderful show. Thank you. you all. Uh, actually, I don't know for sure when or where to start this. Uh, the one thing I have noticed among the majority of people I meet uh, is that they seem to underestimate uh, themselves. Uh, people have no idea what they are capable of until someone goes around and shows them uh, just how capable human beings can be. So uh, on my part, for the better part of my life, I didn't underestimate uh, myself. Uh, sorry, I did un underestimate myself. I don't know how I developed the habit, uh, but I did. In school, I didn't raise my hand, even though I felt I, I knew the answer. Uh, in meetings that worked, uh, I would keep quiet, even though I thought I had a brilliant idea to share. The moment uh, w when it really hit me uh, was when a friend told me this, uh, Ali, you are your own uh, harshest secretary. Uh, isn't it? Uh, it's true, isn't it? Uh, we are the hardest on ourselves, more so than anybody, anybody else. So I, I, I think we lack uh, self-confidence. We have to practice. We have to take the, the, initi the initiative. And on the other hand, I think uh, everyone needs uh, another one to help him, uh, to put him uh, in the, in, on the right track uh, to go on. Right. Th thank you, thank you, Brother Ali, for your uh, in, uh, contribution. And uh, Sheikh Ramaz, would you like to? Uh, if I'm on not it? mistaken, he was talking about s believing in, in yourself, in, in yourself, yourself. Confidence. In yourself. In the underestimating. Underestimating. Yourself. Yeah. This is another uh, mistake we make: is we underestimate ourselves. We become um, virtually too humble, <laughs> or pretentiously humble, if I may add, without treading on your toes. Now. I'm going to go out on a limb now and say to you, I am the most successful person that I know. Me, Ramiz, I am the most successful person I know. What comes to your mind, quickly? Asher. Arrogance. Abdullah. I'm the most successful person I know. Similar thing, arrogance. Arrogance. Yeah. Arrogance. Okay. Now, <coughs> obviously, but that depends on what you measure your success by. The reason I'm the most successful person I know right this time, why? Because I'm Muslim. And even if I didn't have anything in the world and I had Islam, I'm not a successful person I know. Now, we have to, as Muslims, understand that the Lord of the universe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has chosen you out of six billion people to be one of his servants. He could have chosen somebody else, 
but he's chosen you. That is the first marker of success. That's your first yardstick. I am right. a Muslim. Right. I've submitted myself to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So and, I'm most successful and, and the person most I know. successful person on earth, uh, Shaykh, if you'd allow me, is, is Atqakum. Inna Akramakum and Allah at atqakum. atqakum. So, uh, so it is that who fears Allah the most. Most, yes. But in order for me to, that's by degree, obviously. But I have an opportunity now to meet the Lord of the universe. That, for me personally, makes me proud to be a, to be a, a Muslim and to say I'm, I'm success, successful in that point. Other yardsticks I choose my success is that I'm happy in my life the way things are happening now, alhamdulillah. I'm being tested left, right and centre. But who's testing me? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But where's the test come from? Which will be successful for you is if you don't fight the test with your, with your nafs. You don't fight it at all. Now we know the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the Muslim and the Mu'min is like the, 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 uh, the um, date tree. In a hurricane, what happens to the date trees or the palm trees? They can actually go down, right down horizontal to the ground. But then what happens after the storm blows? They, they come right back up again. This is the similitude of the mu'min. But the similitude of those who are fighting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fighting Qadr, the, 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 the kuffar, the, 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 the fasiq, you know? The, uh, 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 the, these people are like the oak tree. You, know, you, you don't have oak trees here, but you have them in England. Oak trees grow up to maybe 500 years old, 600 years old, and they are stiff. Allah just uproots them completely, because they're fighting the Qadr. Yeah. So the whole point I'm making is that we as uh, Muslims have to know that in order to have self-belief, Allah believes in you. Allah believes in you. Understood? He believes in you. How? Because he does not place a burden on you beyond what, you can, what you're capable of bearing. So whatever ibtila, whatever imtihan he gives you, Allah knows and he believes you will pass it. The question is, do you believe it? Right. Or do you say, oh, why me? And this is too much. Yeah, I need to get married. I need children. I need money. I need right. work. I need right. Subhanallah. Whatever you need, mm -hmm. someone else needs uh, better, uh, worse than you and he right. needs it more than you. It is so the attitude. It's the attitude. It the You've got to have a positive mental attitude. It's, di it's difficult to say to someone, oh, have a most positive mental attitude, please. It's difficult. That's right. not what you say to people. Right. That's not what you say to people. You have to show them that they have to believe in themselves, but ask them questions about themselves. Indeed. Sheikh Ram is, um, uh, dear viewers, again, we apologize. Time always cuts us through. Yeah. Uh, there's only time left now to, uh, for the daily... Uh, 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 Islamic trivia question where you could win with us a laptop. Um, uh, tonight's question is, uh, who was the foster sister of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And the choices are, one, Arumaysa, two, al Khansa, three, al shayma Now remember that you should SMS us the answer at 2 3277171 That's the SMS, you, you write your name, your country and the number of the correct answer. The question again, who was the foster sister of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Choices one, al rumaysa two, al khansa three, al shayma Good luck to all. Dear viewers, on behalf of you, we thank our psychotherapy specialist and life coach trainer, uh, self-development uh, Specialist Sheikh Ramiz Ibrahim. Thank you, Sheikh Ramiz. Looking forward to, to meet you tomorrow, inshallah. And uh, we thank also on behalf of you our distinguished uh, panel here in our studios, brothers Abdullah Ad Yami, Amr Abdul Al, Asher Saeed, and Sharif Hamzi. And we thank you, dear viewers at home, until we meet again tomorrow, inshallah, same time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Glory be to Allah who sent Ramadan as a mercy to mankind. It's a purification of our soul, our heart and our mind. Bear with patience for the sake of our Rahman. A continuous training to strengthen our ease.